Hi everyone, welcome to the Super Clash Spooky Cast, a podcast where we take a deep dive into the horror stories of Reddit and discuss the things that truly go bump in the night. My name is Trey and I'll be your spooky guide tonight. I am joined today by Connor and David. I will be reading the first story today. Uh, this story comes from the subreddit Let's Not Meet and is submitted by uh, you slash that's ridiculous dude and it is called you made the right choice so this happened a couple days ago i live in the suburbs of northern california with my parents in an upper middle class neighborhood my parents are away for their anniversary so i've had the place to myself for the week so i got home from a late shift at work around 1 a.m i go inside i shower then i head into the kitchen to make some buffalo wings for dinner I crack open a beer and sit in front of the TV. I was sifting through movies to watch on HBO Max when all of a sudden the doorbell rings. It actually startled me to the point that I actually jumped off the couch, knocking my beer over in the process. It's now 2 a.m. and there was no good reason for anyone to be at the door at this uh, hour. (laughs) I just stared in the direction of the front door for several seconds before it rang again, followed by rapid knocking on the door and the window. Now, for whatever reason, I was no longer scared, but more annoyed at the fact that some idiot would think it's an appropriate time to be banging on someone's front door. I head over to the front door, unlock the deadbolt, and pull the front door open, leaving the chain in place. In the heat of the moment, I did not think to look out the window first. I just yanked the door open. Standing on my front porch was a woman around mid-twenties, with long silky black hair and a purple hoodie with black pants. I said, can I help you? To which she responds with, yeah, sorry to bother you so late, but my boyfriend and I are having some car trouble and our phones are dead. We were wondering if you could possibly let us use yours. She pointed up the street to a dark colored sedan parked underneath the street lamp and said, see, that's us right there. Now, had this been any other person, I would have said no, but she looked innocent. Like she was a college student, I live in a college town. And it wasn't uncommon for college kids to be out late on a Friday night. I asked her where her boyfriend was, and she said he'd walk to the gas station to see if anyone had a phone there. I pulled my iPhone out and told her to make it quick as I was about to go to bed. She thanked me and said she'd only take two seconds. After a couple rings, whoever she called picked up, and she said, Yeah, it's me. I'm borrowing someone's phone. She stopped talking, and I could barely make out a man's voice on the other end. Now at this point, I started to feel uneasy. She was taking a lot longer to be done with the phone call, and I had started to get impatient. The whole time, she just stood there staring at me, with a wide-eyed expression and a creepy smile that looked forced, while this person on the other end kept talking. She finally said, okay, bye, and handed me my phone back. She then said, do you think I might be able to come inside to use your bathroom? I said no and wished her good luck before shutting the front door. There's the bush. (laughs) Right as I was about to walk away, I heard her laugh and say, you made the right choice. I looked out the peephole and she was still standing on my porch, but now she had a man standing next to her. He looked to be around her age and was wearing a hoodie and a face mask. The pair then started to circle around my house, banging on windows and laughing. I didn't hesitate to call 911 at this point. They stuck around for several minutes trying to get in through my back door. I had my Glock 19 in hand, aimed at the back door with 911 on speaker, and was prepared to do whatever I had to do if they got in. They banged on my back door for around 5 minutes before they finally left. I watched them run up the street to the same black sedan I'd mentioned earlier, and take off up the street. The cops showed up a few minutes later and took a report. They told me that I was the third person to call them that night, reporting a suspicious couple to enter homes. I don't know what they had planned, but I'm inclined to believe it was never uh, never anything nice. Moral of this story is never answer the front door at 2am, especially without looking to see who it is first. I learned my lesson that night. Jeez, oh, dude. I would <laughs> I would never, ever answer the door in, late at night. Right. That's, that's yeah. what I'm saying, man. Like, I don't Two care things. who it is. Check, check out the window, turn all your lights off, and check out the window, and don't open the damn door. Right, I'll, I'll like call a cop for you from inside. Here. <laughs> Need some help? Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Right, like I'll yeah. I'll call AAA with like whatever I gotta do, 
You, you know, but honestly, like, I'm not answering the door. Like, if it's 2 a.m., sorry, it's not happening. Like, like if your mysterious visitor says you made the right choice, <laughs> you're part of a game you don't even know about. But, but not only that, but the fact that, like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, she's in her mid-20s, she looks innocent. Like, no, no, no. People these days are super sketchy. Like, I, I don't care who you are, most people, in my opinion, uh, are evil as fuck. You know, like, they have bad intentions. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you'd think with, with COVID and stuff, people would be, you know, less uh, less willing to interact with, with sketchiness, right? But I guess no. not in this, uh, this, uh, nope. this instance. <laughs> Some people are just that daring. I'm just, like, I, I wouldn't answer the door. Like, I might be like, who's there? And if they gave me that spiel, I'd be like, sorry, I can't help you. Like, this is not happening. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad that this person had the sense to to not let them in the house. Yeah. Because um, who knows what would have happened then. Um, so and, we wouldn't have been posted. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, the, and, the fact that you, like... You and, open a dialogue with someone, and then they continue to harass your house. That's just... They had to have been on drugs. Right. And, you know, luckily, like, they, they had a firearm with them uh, in case something did happen. Like, you know, I know all of us own a firearm. Like, I've got a shotgun. And a big dog. You guys have, yeah, and, and we've got <laughs> big... Well, David has a cat. Maybe it's ferocious. I I, it is <laughs> my cat is quite ferocious, yes. <laughs> Ask anyone that's been over to my house. It's, it, well, it is at you. But, uh, yeah, like, you know, fi find ways to keep yourself safe at night. Um, you know, use, don't use uh, always use a condom. Uh... <laughs> I don't know if that yeah. applies in this situation. <laughs> uh, a, a little bit of a PSA there. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Unless you're letting them in your house for that reason. I don't I don't really know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, stay, stay weary, guys. Um, you know, especially at 2 a.m. Don't, don't let strangers into your house. Oh, don't um, let strangers in. Okay. Got yeah. it. But uh, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Um, if you have any stories you'd like to submit, you can do so via our email, which is the letter S, the letter C, spookycast at gmail.com. Uh, we will leave that in the description below. Uh, we hope you have a safe and spooky night, and we will catch you guys on the next one.